Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in the late 2013 through early 2015 model 13-inch MacBook Pro. This process involves the use of flammable substances and runs the risk of fire or personal injury if the battery you're removing gets damaged during removal. For your safety, be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. For this installation, it's vital that we drain the battery until the computer shuts down to reduce risk of accidental ignition of the battery. We've already drained the battery, gathered our materials, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. The first thing to do is place the cloth that came with your kit over the keyboard of your MacBook Pro and close the lid to help protect your screen in case of any spillage of the adhesive remover. We can now remove the bottom cover. Start with the two pentalobe screws in the center of the hinge edge as they're smaller than the others. Then you can remove the remaining eight pentalobe screws. You can now lift the bottom cover off and set it aside. The first thing we'll want to do is detach the battery. Do this by lifting up on this connector until it comes free. For the early 2015 models, there is an additional cable going to the trackpad that needs to be removed. 2013 and 2014 models don't have this cable, so if you're upgrading one of those, you don't have to worry about it. Disconnect the cable by first lifting the latch on its SIF connector, then use your nylon pry tool to separate the cable from the battery enough that you can slide the cable from the connector. Finally, you can peel the cable free of the battery and position it out of the way. Remove the three screws holding the left speaker assembly in place. Then do the same for the right one. Being careful not to pull too hard on the wires, you should now be able to lift the speaker assemblies out of their channels and lay them on the logic board. There's a screw holding the battery frame in place near the battery connector which needs to be removed. For early 2015 models, this is the last one you need to worry about. On the 2013 and 2014 models, there are four more to remove as well, two on each side. At this point, we're going to be working with adhesive remover, so be sure you're working in a well-ventilated area and use the protective glasses and gloves included with your kit. Using the syringe included in the kit, apply about a quarter of a milliliter of adhesive remover under one of the outer battery cells and let it sit for about a minute or two. Then, starting at a corner, work one of the plastic cards underneath the battery cell, slicing through the weakened adhesive strips until it comes free. You can use more adhesive remover if you need to, but try and use as little as possible. Once the first cell is free, move it out of the way and repeat the process on the second cell. Again, try to use as little adhesive remover as possible. Once both cells are loose, use one of the plastic cards to hold them up from the surface of the MacBook Pro so they don't accidentally re-adhere. 
You can now repeat the process with the two outer cells on the other side. For the center cells, use your syringe to apply about a quarter milliliter of adhesive remover between the two cells and let it sit for about a minute. Work a card in between the two cells and use it to gently lift up on one cell and slice at the adhesive until it comes free, like with the other ones. Then, do the same with the last cell, adding another quarter milliliter of adhesive remover if you need to. You should then be able to lift the battery unit up and out of the MacBook Pro. While it's optional, it's generally a good idea to remove the remaining adhesive from the old battery so that the new one has a clean surface to adhere to. To do this, simply use a little of the adhesive remover and use your nylon tool to scrape up the adhesive until you can peel it the rest of the way off. Once you're done, wipe up any extra adhesive remover and let the MacBook sit for about a half an hour to ensure everything has evaporated and dried. Now, it's time to reassemble your MacBook Pro. First, peel off the paper backing covering the adhesive on the battery. Then, set the battery unit in place, making sure it lays flat. Next, replace the screw near the battery connector that helps keep the battery in place. If you have a 2013 or 2014 model, you can now also replace the other four screws that hold in the battery. If you have a 2015 model, you don't need to worry about this step. Then, set the left speaker assembly back into place, making sure that its wire is routed under the metal screw post. Then, secure the speaker in place with its three screws. The top screw will be the middle-sized one, the corner one the longest, and the shortest screw along the bottom edge. Then, do the same thing on the other side. If you have a 2015 model, you can now reattach the trackpad by sliding the cable into its ZIF socket until it's fully seated, then locking it down by pushing its bar flat. Finally, you can reattach the battery by lining up its connector and pushing it into place. We can now replace the bottom cover and screws. Start with the two center screws along the hinge edge as they're shorter than the others. Then, replace the remaining eight screws. You can now open your MacBook Pro and remove the protective cloth. Now it's time to charge and condition your battery. First, shut your computer all the way down. Then, attach the power adapter. The light on the adapter should turn amber to show that the battery is charging. 
Once the battery is 100% charged, the light should turn green. Once it has, you should leave it connected for at least two more hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. You can still use it at this time, but don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Once the battery is discharged, your computer will automatically shut down. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Finally, reattach the power cable and let the battery charge back up to 100%. This time, you can use the computer while it's charging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to what they were before and use your computer normally.